Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to part four in our series on reviewing web components. In this video, we're gonna be looking at Stencil.js, which is a web component framework made by Ionic. I'm especially excited for this one because I've been a pretty heavy user of Ionic since it first came out. The story behind Stencil is that when they first brought out Ionic, it was really tightly coupled with Angular because that was pretty much the most popular framework at the time. Since then, other frameworks, React, Vue, have gained a lot of popularity. And so what the Ionic team decided to do was to decouple their components from any particular framework. So they develop Stencil internally first to create native custom elements, web components. And then once they found stability in that project, they released it. What's really interesting about Stencil is that they position it as not only a framework for web components, but also as a framework to create scalable design systems. If you've been following along with this series, you'll know that we've already looked at Lit Element, which is the framework made by the Polymer team and Angular Elements, which is the framework or set of methods made by the Angular team for creating or converting components into native custom elements. This time we'll be looking at Stencil and then we'll finish up the series with Bit and Svelte. As always, the code is gonna be posted on GitHub in a repo called Web Components. You can see we've already got Lit Element up and Angular Elements up, you'll be able to view this repo and compare how easy or complicated it is to create the same component. So in this case, it's gonna be a progress bar. For the most part, I'm gonna try and stick to the primary language that the framework is intended to be used in. With Lit Element, there was a choice to use either TypeScript or ES6. I chose ES6. With Angular, I chose TypeScript. It looks like Stencil also has the option to use TypeScript or ES6. Uh, we'll have a look and we'll see what makes most sense for this one as well. We'll look at the website, the documentation, we'll assess the community size, we'll look at how much support the community has, and we'll recreate our progress bar in Stencil and we'll assess how easy or difficult it is to use. As always, make sure you remember to like this video and subscribe so that you get updated as soon as I release the next part of the series. And with that being said, let's get on with it. So, Stencil website. So the difference firstly between this and the last two is this is a dedicated website with Lit Element. It seemed like it was just like a offshoot or, or like a side page and definitely with Angular Elements, it didn't seem like it was the main focus. Uh, it was just a single page and that made it really, really difficult to get the information I needed to successfully create the progress bar component. I actually ended up having to look online and find other tutorials to get the information that I needed. So let's hope this is better. So right here, there's two buttons, why stencil and get started. So we'll st start with why stencil. All right, stencil is a compiler that generates web components, more specifically custom elements. Stencil combines the best concepts of the most popular frameworks into a simple build time tool. So essentially what it's doing is it's taking the native web component spec and it's just building on it so that we get to use up-to-date technologies like JSX and that should hopefully make it a lot more pleasant and simple to create our component. They're basically targeting PWAs, not only just hybrid mobile apps. Essentially what they're saying is they've just taken a subset of the features of a standard framework or of a framework and have packaged that together into like a pseudo framework type of thing. All right, so their goals and objectives are to meet web standards, to enable automatic optimizations, uh, to be future friendly. That's really important, especially right now where technology is changing so quickly. The state of JavaScript and web development as it is today is so different to how it was a couple of years ago. And that's kind of why I'm doing this review as a follow-up to the video I made back in 2017. When we look at browser support, uh, one comparison we can make with Angular is although Firefox support is the same version 63 plus, they do support Edge 16 
and IE11 because they bundle some polyfills. So that's not something that Angular does. Angular consciously drops older browser support and their documentation says they're working on edge support. So that's clearly an advantage here. It doesn't even seem like there's that much to it. So get started. So we will NPM in it stencil. We'll choose what type of starter we want. So we'll go with component and then we will get into building our first component. All right, cool. Nice and easy. Let's get on with it. Well, that was surprisingly easy, much, much easier than it was to get Angular started. And funnily enough, I'm stencil, don't call me a framework JS. I've been calling it a framework this whole time. So I guess that was directed right at me. So let's look at the directory structure. We've got a www folder and I've got some config and then in the source folder, I guess this is where we create our new component. So it looks like they've done all the scaffolding for us. This is really, really cool. All right, so when we look at the existing component here, so they've got prop, first, middle, last. They've got a render method. They've got a, I guess, a internal private method here that just gets the name. They've even got tests out the box. This is really cool. All right, cool. So let's get on with it. First, let's see if there's any helper methods that will help us generate our component. But it doesn't look like there is any helper method, so let's just create the folder structure ourselves and see how far we get. All right, so first build error progress bar tag must contain a dash to work as a valid web component. And that's part of the specs. So that's an easy change. So we've got something that kind of resembles a progress bar. So let's keep on working on that and see if we can get it going. Cool, well, we see the progress going up now. And the next thing is to try and fill up the progress bar.
All right, well, that was, uh, I have to say, a lot easier than it was with Angular. Let's have a look through and see exactly what I've done. So there was already an index file and you can see that there was already a component. So I've left that there and I've just added my own one, the progress bar one right there. As with every other demo, I have added the script that just increments the progress bar every 100 milliseconds. The only difference that I made to this script was over here. So you can, once you access the web component, you can access its properties directly. And so just setting uh, the progress bars complete number to the newly incremented number right there uh, was all I had to do. Then when we look at the component itself, so we're setting the tag. We set the shadow DOM to false just for this demo. We've created a prop called complete and defaulted it to zero. We have a watch method here and all that's doing is firing every time the value of this prop here changes. And what we're doing within that watcher is just getting that inner progress bar and updating its width. And then as always, our CSS is unchanged in a separate file here. So overall, that was actually a quite pleasant experience. I have to say out of the three tools that I've tested so far, the element, angular elements and stencil. Stencil is in my opinion, uh, the most pleasant to code in. I like that they use the syntactic sugar, these decorators like this, uh, makes it really clear exactly what you're dealing with. Very Angular-esque as well. When we look at the documentation, they do have quite a few decorators here. So they have one for the component, which we use, one for the prop that we used, uh, one for state to declare the internal state of the component. And what I like is they also suggest when you should use each of these decorators. I also love how they've listed out how to integrate with different frameworks. So if we wanna use Stencil within React, they actually have a code snippet that shows you how to do it. Same with Angular, same with Vue, Ember, and even vanilla JavaScript. Overall, I'm actually very, very impressed by this. Let's see what happens when we run some of the other commands. So for example, if we run build, what it's done is it's automatically generated the readme file for our component in Markdown. So it's listed out the properties automatically. It even lists out the default value, the type, because we're using TypeScript, the description in the comment above, any attributes, and the property name itself. And finally, let's test generate. That's what we were looking for before. I guess if we wanted to create progress bar two, for example. And there we go, it's already generated it for us. It's created the TSX file, the spec file for test, the end-to-end -end file and the CSS, this is just really, really cool. So far, this is definitely my favorite. Again, all the code here will be on the public GitHub, which I'll link down below. Links to the previous videos, I will put in the description as well. And just remember to like and subscribe so that you don't miss the next part in the series, which is gonna be testing bit. And I have to say, it's really gonna have to be something special to impress me more than Stencil has. I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you next time.